Hey everybody, Sean Keating here. I want to welcome you to the Dental Up Podcast Show by Keating Dental Art, where anything goes and nothing stays. Get the latest clinical focuses in dental and thought-provoking spins on the most viral topics out there. Join us every week for the most mind-enhancing ways to grow your practice, mixed with lifestyle, sports, news, and topics that don't suck. Hey everybody, Sean Keating here. I want to welcome you to this week's episode of the Dental Up Podcast, brought to you by Keating Dental Arts here in beautiful Irvine, California. Today we have Dr. Howard Goldstein, DMD. He's a general dentist and a 1980 graduate of the University of Pennsylvania School of Dental Medicine. He completed a general practice residency at the Wilkes Bar VA Medical Center and opened his private practice in 1982. He has always been an advocate of continuing education, but was often frustrated by the lack of opportunities to dialogue with others in the dental profession. That changed in 2003 when he discovered Dentaltown.com. Interactions with others on Dentaltown provided him with the knowledge and the stimulus to add new technology, products, and techniques into his dental practice. He is grateful that he no longer has to practice alone. As a message board manager, Howard maintains Dentaltown.com as the prime website for everyone in the dental profession to discuss all aspects of dentistry openly. As a director of continuing education for Foran Media, he continues his passion for CE by making sure all townies have access to accredited, relevant courses that enhance their practice. He has a full-time dental practice and lives with his wife, Deborah, and their son in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. In his free time, he collects single malt scotch whiskey, enjoys running, and he likes hiking in the Pennsylvania woods with his laboratory retrievers. Please welcome Dr. Howard Goldstein, DMD. What's up, Howard? How you doing, baby? <laughs> hey, Sean. It's good to see you. No time here for me. See you. Whatever I'm doing here. But, uh... <laughs> I got. I got to update that biography. I didn't realize that it's kind of outdated. Man. I got. A, I sold my dental practice five years ago. And <laughs> <laughs> so, so much for uh, continuing working on uh, in dentistry. But yeah, I sold it five years ago. I work full time for Dental Town. Oh, that's so cool, dude! I know that because it's been five years since you sent me work, baby. I used to do all your dental lab work for years, and either I switched to another lab or I, or I sold my practice. <laughs> I was hoping you stopped because, uh, man, I, I love. Hey, I, would, I would never switch from you, so I I, I, I retired from doing dentistry. Ah, oh, dude, that's so cool, man. I I loved you because I remember you were like the blue moose freaking monster, dude. You did impressions <laughs> with blue freaking moose and no tray even. I mean, that's freaking nuts. Hey, you know, I, I know some people say you need a really stiff metal tray because it's accurate. But I said, no, I, I, my attitude was they could still distort a little bit, even a metal tray. You could, someone bites down and it could flex just a little bit and then they take it out, it could flex back. Oh, I know, dude. I got I got so many guys tried doing it, and they use different trays and stuff, and that kind of messed it up. But and then I, the big thing from a lab perspective was you have to add like ten coats of dye spacer to get the freaking um, you know thing to fit. With you, it was just like a regular impression. It was perfect, and you'd always be on Dental Town yeah. trying to tell the guys, "Well, this blue moose technique, this is the way I do it." And uh, got everything. We never had remakes with you. Everything uh, dropped in the mouth. I actually have a PDF written up, so if anybody ever wants a copy of my impression technique you know, just to email me i'll send it to you i'll do that like i can send it to you, yeah. send it to you, and you can we'll put it we'll put a link on it on this when we put this out to the to the masses here um okay. yeah if we can get a link on that you can text me that we'll I'll uh send we'll, i'll just send you an email and attach it you can do what you want with it. ah beautiful howard you're the man dude so all for, all for a little low price of free <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome dude well hey i always like to start off with sports man and i know you're a big football philly Man, you, I see your flying eagle hat you got on right now, dude. Uh, so, e Phil, Phil, Eagles, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Eagles, you guys almost burnt that town to the freaking ground, man. I'll tell you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm no youngster. I'm like 63, and Philadelphia doesn't get that many championships in any sport. And I, I've had my Flyers in the 70s. I had my Sixers in the 80s. Phillies recently, 2008, and I could never get. I needed that. I needed that Eagles one. Oh, and I finally got it. 
my sports bucket list is now complete. Can you believe that? So, and to think with yeah. them, man, if they get Wentz back, I mean, that guy's a freaking stud. But Foles, I mean, you know, yeah, what a team for Foles. I mean, he's good, but he's not the greatest quarterback. I, no, mean, I mean, I'll be honest with you. When, Foles, when Wentz went down, I was in Nace era saying, yeah, that's, you know, he was probably the MVP of the league this year. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, I said, well, that's Karma's way of saying this is not our year, you know? And so I am terrible. I'm shocked. I'm still on cloud nine. Wow, dude. Know? I bet. I mean, because Philadelphia, I mean, there's not a whole lot there other than some cheese steaks and shit to win a football <laughs> thing. I mean, that's pretty good. Oh, that's awesome. What about any of this Olympics? You watching any of that stuff, you know? Uh, I'm trying to, but, uh, you know, it's like it's too many commercials and too much bullshit, you know, just – just don't see the events, you know? I don't have the patience to sit and watch it for three hours and see, like, two things, you know? Exactly. I mean, I'm like, I don't even record it where I forward fast it, but last night we were watching, and I love that giant slalom downhill. That that, that reminds me of growing yeah. up, man. Those son of a bitches going down the hill so freaking fast, and, like, oh, man, that, isn't that neat? Doesn't that bring you back to the old I days? Know. I got to check online. I wonder if you can just click on and see the actual runs, you know, without having to, you know, Oh, you know, I'm sure you could, but uh, yeah, I think even uh, yeah. it was just prelims yesterday. But um, yeah, that was freaking pretty amazing, man. It's uh, to see those guys how fast and the seat of their pants, and I mean the way the legs when they hit those jumps, kind of, and they're going 100 miles an hour, and that's just nuts, man. <laughs> you say with those uh, those snowboards on those uh, on those hat, like Sean Wade and that little girl, man, oh, they were unbelievable. Little Korean girl, man, it's like the little Kim girl from Korea, but she's a fr- um, American. You know, uh, first uh, first generation yep. American, but they're sitting there putting on the damn Olympics, and here we got the Korean girl winning the gold, but it's for America. <laughs> and then Sean White, he freaking at thirty one, man, and for him to go and do what he did after a huge accident he had and just tore his face up, but the dude freaking just crushed it on it and then they got all this sexual harassment stuff come up that he he paid off uh, a, a year or two ago i think he was sending pictures of his junk to one of his uh a drummer in one of his bands as a girl well, drum- who hasn't done that once or twice in their life <laughs> no shit it's like dude you know so it's just my junk you know it's supposed to be like what's that one where it disappears like snapchat I think that's where it goes. You get to see it for 10 seconds. But I think if you're really sharp, you can, like, double-click something and get a screenshot. It's like, yeah. Hey, for anyone listening, I was joking. I've never done it, yeah. okay? Was, oh, I've never sent junk either, man, because that would scare the shit out of the people see my junk. It's like, whoa! No. <laughs> Uh, my mama kick my butt, and I'd be freaking. I'd be living in an apartment down by the railroad tracks, man. <laughs> uh, that's. I should have been doing a podcast if you would go off the rails, but okay. <laughs> yeah, you know Shannon, my wife, and we we've had spent plenty yeah. of plenty of time right, together. Right. Well, dude, let's den- let's dental up now, man. So tell me, Howard. Dr. Goldstein, right. tell me at what point of your life did you think, you know what, I'm, I want to be a dentist. Tell me a little bit about that. Okay. Well, actually, my grandfather was a dentist. Oh, you're kidding. One of my, one of my grandfathers. And I remember as a little kid hanging out in his office and just playing. I used to play with the mercury. <laughs> He's like, I really don't play with a jar of mercury. Yeah. And that was before I would do that. It was poisoning. Yeah. We so I remember, like, you get on the floor and, like, think, oh, this is so cool, like, playing with the mercury, you know, and. It was uh, some, but yeah, I wanted to be a dentist then, and then I realized as I was getting older that I, I, you know, I had summer jobs every summer, you know, doing this and doing that, and I, every summer I got into a fight with my boss. So I realized <laughs> I got to find a job where I could be my own boss, you know. Uh-huh. It's like, you know, so I said, okay, that dentistry thing, that's right, you know, and also I didn't want to have to deal with life and death shit, you know, like yeah. you know, telling people like, oh yeah, you got cancer, you're gonna die, but. I can tell someone you're gonna you're gonna lose that tooth. Yeah. You know? that, I can handle that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you're... So I, I went to dentist and uh, I worked hard for it and I got it. No kidding. Now you went to uh, the school Pennsylvania, huh? College of uh, of dentistry. Yeah, I, I went to uh, Muhlenberg College, which is a little college in downtown Pennsylvania. And a couple of people I know actually went. My friend Tim Brooke went there, and Rich Rosenblatt went there years later. Okay. But uh, yeah, then I, then I went to University of Pennsylvania, which is in Philadelphia. It's, it's, it's one of the top dental schools. Well, at least it was. Or not. Maybe after I got out of it, it wasn't. But uh, it, was back, <laughs> back, it was before I, when I first got in, yeah. But, um, 
I was, I was four years in Philadelphia. They were a school that was very, uh, at the time, I don't know if they are now or not, very perio oriented. You know, the dean was a periodontist. Okay. And, so it's it was it was a good background, you know, perio prosthodontics, and uh, I always like prosth- prosthodontics the best of everything. You know, dentures and crown, yeah, rester sort of. Oh, my whole career, I enjoy that the most. You know, yeah, you're a master Poly- at everything. I mean, you're like a MacGyver. I mean, you did everything, and even too the way you figured out, you know, that blue moose technique and you own trayless, and I mean, you push the parameters and things, and you know, you kind of discovered it. No one else really did it that way, I don't think, or maybe the guy. No, I, I, remember the old hit technique. HIT, uh, something hydrodynamic impression technique. I start first. I saw it had these special trays, and you kind of injected the material into the uh, hole. Into and I, I tried that, and it was crowns never fit. Yeah. You know, they were. It was like it was like because you're taking an impression in an impression, and then I figured out like okay, so what? So I started playing around different experiments, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden my crowns started coming back good. And I go, okay, well, this is what I'm doing now, and I kept on doing that, and that. That's okay, I'm not switching. Yeah, you got that down, man. I mean, so many guys. Uh, the biggest thing when I work with Dennis is freaking get me an impression that captures the margin. I mean, yeah. it could be off angle, and I can do a reduction coping to upright it. And, uh, you know, and I can also, if you give me, you know, the mesial, buckle, and distal, you know, I can get the facial as it comes around, the right parameter sometimes, but it's just the hardest thing from a lab's perspective. You didn't have to do all that. I know. You should just, you should just boom, this is, oh, okay, good. I can read this perfectly. There's the margins. Let's give this guy a kick-ass crown. Exactly. You know? But you know what, dude? When I call these guys and say, dude, you can't see your margin, and they get, like, pissed. I've been doing this 25 years. My other lab had no problem. I'm like, well, dude, I can't read it, but I'm going to try. And then after, you know, no. you know, it's just tough. And then, you know? and then it comes back. You know, they're probably the same. I hate the stereotype, but they're probably the same ones that put it out in the crown as, like, a slightly open margin. And then, it, yeah, well, whatever. Yeah. You know, it's fine. It's you know, tough. You know, but, That'll last five years. What the heck? You know? <laughs> hey, that's it. That's why we do the five year guarantee. No. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So dude, yeah. tell me about when you got out of dental school, did you go an associate for somebody? Or did you start your own practice? Tell me how you started out there. Okay. Yeah, I graduated and I did a general GPR, general practice residency for a year up in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania, in a VA hospital. Oh, you're kidding. And- I do no, a ton of VA a, work, dude, for Loma Linda, out in Las Vegas, yeah. VA, the I, Long Beach VA. I love those yeah. guys. Look, the government I, I mean, pays I, me, I, you know, quick. A ton of crowns, did a ton of dentures. I mean, yep. those guys, you know, half the guys didn't even have any teeth in their mouth, you know. But uh, no pedo. <laughs> <laughs> no pedo at all. And, uh, and it was good. It was good. I wasn't ready to – then I looked for an associateship in Allentown, and I got one in uh, – and I, for six months until, it, I, my plan was to be an associate for like three years, but then we got, ah, there was a little incident with him, and it was my wife, with his wife and me, and I don't want to get into that. <laughs> oh, you weren't doing any bag, were you, or did you tell her off? What happened? I had something for a private conversation, Keith. <laughs> yeah, said. all right, baby, hey, we all got those conversations now. That's yeah, funny. But, uh, no, but anyway, so I had, I had to get out of there after six months, and, um, I was 28, and I said, well, it wasn't my plan of my practice, but I'm not going to go to another associate at this point. I mean, it's, it's stupid. So yeah. I looked in the area, and I saw there was a no dentist in this one stretch, you know, a road between Bethlehem and Easton. And I uh, found a place, and I just started from scratch in, you know, 1982. Hey, believe and, that. Uh, 82, yeah, I was freaking partying like a rock star, man, and like – Doing no good in '82. I didn't start the field till '84. Thank God I got out of no. I was still single in '82, you know. So okay. I my hours, you know, when I first started was twelve to nine every day, right? <laughs> That's cool. so I would go out, you know, I work to nine, go out to the clubs. Then I have to be at work the next day to noon, right? Yeah, that's a great hours. And the patients, and the patients loved it because they all great, you know. They all wanted to come after work, you know. So my practice took off because of the, my night hours. That's so cool. And back then, dude, a picture of you, you looked exactly like uh freaking carlos santana man <laughs> it's like you had this afro and freaking just and you can still do look at you <laughs> we've kind of stolen like, you know <laughs> now you're much yeah you're better looking than carlos you're you're much prettier <laughs> I, have, I have a nice nose yeah nose. you do got that little button <laughs> nose there 
Ah, <laughs> oh, dude. So tell me, starting your practice, man, what were some of the biggest hurdles that you had? Was it like uh, uh... The first week I had, I know, I saw three people my first week. <laughs> You know, next week, second week, I saw five people, you know, and it was just getting, you know, reputation, getting my name out there. Okay. That was it. You know, this is, don't forget, this is before the internet, you know, so I, you know, I, next year, I made sure I had a nice yellow page ad, you know. Absolutely. And that, and that was the way to get known back then, and it worked. Can you it believe that? You know? That's a trip. What about in Allentown and Bethlehem? Do you know a guy, uh, what's his name? Dr. Neil Goddard, you know, he had a, he was like a big periodontist and I worked for him for years, but he retired recently, he had a bad back and stuff, but Goddard, his name was, but he, no, I didn't know him. Yeah. I didn't know him. Must not be that big in that town. No, he, uh, he's a big <laughs> time dad, did a lot of, uh, implants with us and he was a periodontist, but he packs more crown and bridge than most guys did. So it's kind of no. crazy. <laughs> I bet you didn't get, he didn't get many referrals from many general dentists. If he's oh, been, he's doing I'm sure they didn't like him at town, man. His big thing no. too is non-surgical perio. I remember he had this thing, man, you take periostat one pill a day, rest of your life. You'll never have perio issues, but periostat, remember that? Or is that still yeah, there? Yeah. yeah. Is that still around? I, mean, I guess yeah. it is. I don't know. I'm not sure on how that works. But, uh, yeah. uh, so, dude, tell me a little bit about when you were trying to grow your practice. What, what was your biggest thing? Was it like word of mouth and referrals? Did you do any kind of? Yeah, back then it was a uh, combination word of mouth and the yellow pages. You know, you know and I always, I, I from day one, I know it's probably something different now. I never got involved with the, taking the insurance. I never was a provider. I don't know, to be honest with you, I don't know if that's possible in this day and age, but it's what I was back in the 80s and 90s, you know. I didn't do that. So I just, you know, we would submit the forms in, and, but the patients had to pay the balance or, you know. It's, okay. So, yeah, we got them. Was, that was what the big thing was back then. Um, yeah, just word of mouth and, mark, you know, marketing. But then around 2003 or so, then I got, of course, I had an office website. Okay. You know, and it's that's the way to go. And I probably, I stopped doing yellow pages because I wasn't getting, you know, it wasn't worth it anymore. No one was using the yellow pages. Yeah. And so, you know, we got it. I did some, uh, as Sir said, drop it in the station. So we were like number one, if you could, you know, Lehigh Valley dentist, my, my site came up number one okay. for most of the time. And, uh, we got people from the internet, you know, and I did some, uh, mailers and stuff like that. And, uh, and it kept me going. That's awesome. Yeah, I remember meeting you way back, I think probably 2003, 2004, one of the first dental meetings uh, I ever been to is a dental town meeting. And somehow we got hooked up with a bunch of group of us and we've been together I, ever I, since. I think the first time we met was at Kankapalooza. Yeah, Kankapalooza, uh, Chicago midwinter, dude. And we yeah, would, Kanka yeah. would get a big suite. And somehow I met that dude at the Yankee. We we had a booth, like one of our first booths, 2002, 2003. And mm-hmm. he was a couple of things down and bob brandon you know uh he yeah, goes oh that's bob. that's dr kanka man he's the big uh cementation dude bonding guy and i'm like well, look, let's go talk to him i went and talked to him we hit it off like just buddies yeah. like let's go eat let's go drink he lived i, I found out he likes champagne and i always got that guy the freaking cristal and in the other dom perum dom perum was oh so so but the cristal he loved and i i always did that because he started sending me work and we worked still work i still do all his life i know he always he still raves about your work oh, and everything. He's, he's, he's the only guy you know who's drink of choice so if you go to a bar with him go guess order a glass of champagne yeah. you know you gotta get a beer i'll get a scotch he gets a glass of champagne oh, i think it's like a is this a wedding man that's the only time you drink champagne i mean champagne <laughs> is like gut rot oh right. but me i drink that shit i'm like ready to throw up and the same yeah. thing with your scotch i remember all those kinkapaloozas uh, like every year chicago we would do this and we go and freaking you would do your scotch tasting at that benny's place or I something say, no, it's funny, funny you say that we're still doing that i'm doing it next friday oh, yeah. next friday yeah. it's like must be like you know 18 years in a row now i don't know which we have a, it's a hey anyone's invited if you go into chicago moon winter uh, uh, go, go to downtown on the scotch whiskey thread i'll have the whole the information right there okay but, me, but uh, yeah yeah what's the name of that place it's at again Benny's. Benny's. B- B- B-I-N-N-Y-S, Binnie's. Yeah. This year it's at Link in Binnie's in Lincoln Park. On uh, if anyone wants to, do, it's the cost is free. Once again, you get to taste great whiskey, and it's like a two two fifth two o'clock 
on a Friday afternoon of Chicago Midwinter. No kidding. I'm going to be Please. there, but I won't be there at that because I tried drinking I, that scotch with you, man. I remember the one I literally almost threw up. It, it tasted like if you could taste the bark of a tree, it tasted like that nasty. Yeah. So with, that's Isla whiskeys. It's peated. Pe- pe- it's like cooked over a barbecue. You know, it's like barbecue flavored scotch, you know? Yeah, oh, dude, that is just nasty. Are you you going to be in Chicago this year? Yeah, yeah. Mean Channel will be, uh, we're just doing flying up Thursday. And then uh, I got a cow lab that I go to for like laboratory owners and stuff. We do it each year. And I got lab. Are you you have a booth this year? Or? No, we're not doing a booth. We haven't done a booth since uh, like right. two years. We stopped it. We stopped doing all the conventions. Just, it's so damn expensive, man. It's like yeah. 20, 30 grand by the time we get everything out and all my people. And then I call it like the swap meet where you sit there at our booth with, you just stand there and look at the people walk by and it's like a swap meet, you know? It's like we have nothing to sell. We just have our information yeah. to give you. So it's it just was... You know, it was great uh, seeing all our existing accounts, but we couldn't get a doctor to stop that didn't use us. If they knew us, they'd stop. If they don't, they're like, I'm not looking for a lab. I'm not looking for a lab. Just like, oh. Yeah. I think the big meetings are like getting less and less every year. Yeah. But I see a lot of dentists. I mean, they go and they can buy product. They can can see this and they can get their CE. But for labs, I mean, it's just, we probably will start it up again down the line. But just for now, it's just... It's just tough every month. You know, you got the Yankee, you got the Hinman, you got the, you know, Chicago well, Midwinter. District uh, one. How about townie meeting? You yeah. Out. Well, we're doing the townie meeting. Okay. Right. We do no, two. Just, we, just, we, do, we do two meetings a year, and that is the CDA here in Anaheim and California. Right. And then we right. do the dental town meeting because, you know, dental town, I'm loyal to you guys. You guys, you guys help my lab like unbelievable with Howard yeah, Fran and good. you guys and, I mean, even too the way you're in charge of the whole dental community, you know, all the policing and all that shit. I mean, through that's, the that's, year, that's, years, man, that's just amazing. Uh, the whole thing. I mean, there's so much to learn and the whole education part. Tell me a little bit about that. I mean, you're in charge of all that and all that. There's such a great learning environment there, and with all the stuff you got online there with CE and you know, you want to do implants, you want to do veneers, you want to do, you know pull back flap and you know sink certain you know implants i mean there's so many different things tell me a little bit about your whole ce uh situation at dental town there. Okay, i was gonna tell you about the message board first and then go to ce but i'll do it you <laughs> do it any way you want it baby you're the boss no i am i i started when i first got in downtown i was just a regular town and and i saw like this message board and you just posted what whatever you wanted you know you discussed i think my very first post, I told somebody to go after themselves. Now, that was my first post. You know? Great start. We used to be able to cuss and do all sorts of shit back then. Uh, Howard Frank had been saying that uh, he'd go to like lecture. You know, he'd do lectures, and people would come up to him because I would go on downtown, but I don't. You know, it's like cutthroat. It's like personal attacks and all this stuff. So he decided he wanted to cut that out. And lo and behold, and a couple years later, I'm he made me administrator and and run to run the thing so that we you know now you could. If someone does a, you know, a, something differently than you, instead of saying, "Wow, you suck," I can't believe you graduated dental oh, school, you, you can respectfully say, disagree with them and say, "Well, I, that's not quite the way I do it. I would do it this way." I mean, yeah. it's There's the so same many- thing for the yeah there's a lot of talk. i mean all the stuff with you because i you know i'm not smart i'm not wired that way with the uh, religion and uh, the yeah. politics i never really ever talked that and i just i just know I'm you don't smart. win those and yeah so you always are putting out fires i could see some of the threads on you know for religion or if it's politics it's like it's so touchy with everyone i, I just steer clear of that because i'm just well, we realized we just banned politics and religion from the main message board, but we made a separate forum oh, for downtown for politics and religion where you could discuss it and you can do whatever you want, but it doesn't, it's not going to show oh, up on our main. Oh, that's why I never see it. Okay. I wonder where yeah. it went. <laughs> I'm surprised to make it, put it on it. We just delete it and say, Hey, go to the political forum, which is off the main topics page. You have to, it's like hidden. It's like a hidden corner where a dental town where you can't for. Yeah. And well, that was like, my, that, that was like our post horrors. Remember it was called post horrors yeah, or something. Yeah. And that was off site. Cause that's where we used to do all the pictures of Anna Kornikova and all the other shit. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a private group going on right now on, on dental town. That, Cause we have private groups where you have total control. It doesn't show up there. It's just you and your friends or your, you know, whatever. 
I mean, you can have a Keating private group if you want. Okay. And um, it's, I think it runs better than actually Facebook, Facebook groups, because you can like look things up where you can't on Facebook. I mean, yeah. you put a photo on Facebook and it's two days later, it's gone. You'll never see it again. Right. Yep. Exactly. Where, where, you know, you remember in post forward thread, it was like, yeah, you could go back and take a look at what was said two days ago, you know? Yeah. Remember uh, the Kate ba Baker lady? I just want to wring her neck. Remember that I, one? In fact, I'm going to uh, go down. To, I hope you'll come too. We're going out on a Friday night to dinner with Bridges at Chicago. Oh, was yeah. Scotty, I got to call him. He texts me. We're supposed to get yeah. together. They, they were talking about going down a wiener circle again. And, you know, that girl. Yeah. We've done Do that, that, man. We don't want to see that big fat booby again. That lady pulled it out. <laughs> it's like, what the heck? She's like the head one with all the hot dogs. She's like famous on YouTube, but we've done that. <laughs> but yeah, but I think we're gonna try to get together uh, a bunch of us for dinner either Thursday or Friday yeah, or something, man. Friday night. But anyway, so I was so I was doing I was still working as a dentist, but doing this message board thing on the side. Okay. okay? And then in about 2011, they, they called me and said, hey, do you, we need to find a dentist that's, uh, to run our continuing education program. You know, we, we're not happy with the way it is right now. We need to hire someone else. And I threw them a couple names of people, and they said, no, nah, not him, not him, no, no. And I said, well, I'd do it, but I'm already a dentist and messenger. I can't take a third job on. Yeah. And they said, no, nah, well, we'll take away your message board. I go, no, no, I like that. Take away my dental job, okay? You know, <laughs> and, and what? I go, you know what, Sell me, send me the job description. Let me take a look at this. So they sent it to me, and it was, you know, make sure we're certified by ADA, find the speakers, blah, 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 this, that, you know. And the last thing was sell uh, pro, um, sponsorships for you to see programs. And I'm thinking, nah, you know what, I'm not a salesman. Yeah. I'm not interested in the job. And they, so they said, okay, tell you what, if you want to do all the rest, what you do is after you get the program, if you want to sell sponsorship, you could just send it to our sales team and then hand it over to our sales team, and they'll take over from there. And I'm going... Oh, I could hand off as well as anybody. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to passing up responsibility, sure, I could do that. Exactly. So I, I got hired a full-time associate to do my dentistry. I still own the practice, and I took this job on. And after two months, I stopped this whole sponsorship thing. I just decided, <laughs> you know, let's make this thing pay-per-view, keep it cheap. We keep, you know, we yeah. have the numbers, and it worked out much better. And a year later, I sold the practice. Because, yeah. You know, it was still like I was doing it in the corner of his office, doing my work on Dentaltown, the computer, but, it, you know, they'd come in, hey, Howard, Mrs. Jones's crown came off again, at, you know, or, Mrs. <laughs> or the computer is down in room four. What do you want to do? I, I, you know what? 29 years, I was done of this shit. You know? Yeah. So, hard to get out. So <laughs> now I'm, you know, I'm full time on this. And uh, I have a little office here. I pay $400 a month just so I can get out of house, you know, <laughs> and uh, you know, once a, usually once a week, we put we release another program. And, you know, I comb the country for experts on different subjects. And, you know, whatever it is, you know, Martin Trope on Endo, uh, Corey, Corey Glenn on, you know, oh, he's a guiding, you know, he's amazing. You know, yeah. all these guys, the top guys. And um, in fact, I, have, I would love to have Bob do it. Bob Brandon do a course with us. He, oh, you know, okay. what's, 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 he's such a slacker. What's wrong with him? Yeah, we would. Hey, just talk to us, baby. We'll do it. I mean, anything we do to help out the boys at Dentaltown. Yeah. And you do. You got, a, you got so many different CE courses on there. And uh, it's huge. I mean, even for us in dental technology, we have to get a certain amount of credits each year. And, God, I'm getting them in Chicago, a lot of them, too. And I do that every year mainly for to get my credits. But for dentists to be able to go online and get so many of their credits there, plus yeah. to learn. I mean, it's just it's just a great, great I mean, resource. We, I mean, we are to take a, a, a course of us, like 36 bucks. I mean, it's like, you know, it's not, you know, it's not all these really expensive places. It's, it's worth it, but it's good quality. I mean, yeah. Every week, I, I get a course submitted by someone, and I go, you know what? This is, <laughs> no, this is good. it's kind of like the I, karaoke. I, I, it's like, you know what? Not everyone can just get up here and sing. You know, it's Step Brothers, right. when they open up their own karaoke, no, we're different. You can't just get up and sing in ours if you're not good. We only let the good people. <laughs> so we try to keep it high quality but and low in prices, and it's, it's working out. Every year since I, since 2011, we've gone up like 10 15% in uh, – amount of um views oh. so we're growing we're growing that's so awesome dude no it is it's a great thing so what about howard how's he doing i had him out here a couple months back for a freaking uh little uh seminar here and he's he's full of piss and vinegar like always <laughs> he's always no slowing him down oh you know? yeah 
you know, how, you know you, you, one of these days you just got to open up to people. It's not be so self-reserved and shy, you know? No, he opened up. I had a few people going, oh, I don't know about this. How yeah. ran up of his jokes. He, he was rubbing some of them kind of like, oh. You think about um, taking the drain out of his shower at all? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man, there's some people super sensitive out there nowadays. Like, yeah, he, can't take he, a joke he, anymore. But no. He, I saw uh, him the first time in the 90s, and I, and like, I thought, oh my God, I mean, I disagree with about half of what he's saying, but this guy is so entertaining. I got to go back and see him again. Oh, you know? it is. It's just me. I, my attention span is so short, and he engaged me. The first time I heard him was like in at, in Chicago, and uh, he was like at a lab function, and he was just cussing and talking about Dennis being this and that, and all the technicians were like, yeah, we have a dentist telling us what we already know. No, but, you know, and it's just like. Yeah, I mean, when I first saw him, he was, I, I remember thinking about, he's like the Don Rickles of dentistry. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yes. you know? Oh, he don't mess around, man. He gets right to it. And it's like, oh, Howard. And then I see him yeah. each week. He's got like a thousand podcasts. I mean, that's all he does all day. I mean, he's saying, like, this, you know, I want you to do a couple a week, you know? And he's like, no, no. He's always like doing two or three a day. I mean, he's like, I don't I, I can't listen to them all. I mean, wow. the hell has Hey, who, who's got that much time in the car? I mean, I'm telling you, I'm not sitting yeah, at home. Hey, they get great reviews. I mean, he's all the time he's getting, you know, I am a. Uh, just so my practice, I can't wait to tell you how valuable your pot, you know, so I'll good, you know, great for him, but no. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather listen to sports podcasts personally. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So many people are starting them up now. I do one a yeah. week and I'm like, well, you know, uh, it's like. I call my dentist up, say, hey, dude, you want to do a podcast? I'm like, Sean, I don't really want to talk. And I'm like, okay. Because a lot of dentists don't really, I don't know. I mean, I got a lot of dentists, though, so I don't think we'll run out of dentists that will yeah, do it with us. But uh, it's, it's kind you're, of. You're a good guy to do a podcast. You're, in, you're like like Howard. You're engaging. You know, how to, you know, it's not like you don't sit back and say, okay, talk. And then to the guest. And it's, <laughs> tell me a story, Howard. What the heck? Any, uh, tell me a Tell me a wicked little story in the chair, like someone, anyone soiled themselves in your chair. Tell me, what's a good dental story that you got? <laughs> what if they soiled themselves, I didn't know about, which is fine with me. Uh, <laughs> and someone, let's put it this way, a young lady once put her elbow purposely where it shouldn't have been. Oh, you know? really? And you yeah. Can- you didn't, you didn't. I was thinking about the time. So I did take her out later that night, but that's just that. <laughs> that was before you were married, right? <laughs> before I was married, yes. I want to get that clear. I know your wife. She'll kick your butt, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was, I when I was, I said, I opened up when I was single, but. Uh... Oh, man, that's so cool, dude. So what kind of advice would you give anyone starting off, these young, younger doctors starting off, do's, don'ts, anything you could throw out there? I would to think consider- just, you know, just do dentistry like you would want it done on your family. I mean, just stay moral, man. I mean, I don't, I don't want to be preachy or anything, but, uh, you know, don't I, if you just do the right thing for people, to, you know, the patients will come. You know, yeah, you might make a little bit more money on the crown than if you did that big filling, but if it's – if it only needs a filling, do the filling. Yeah. Don't, you know, don't yeah. get in a situation where you have to push. I mean, if it needs a crown, yeah, you do the crown. Yeah. But uh, just, uh, you know, be moral, do the right thing for people. And the words get gets out like this guy really is after my, he's my friend, he's my dentist, and he's looking after me. He's not, I don't get the feeling he's just looking out for the bucks. Yeah. And that's how, I think that's the best way to make a practice grow. Well, I think, you know, and that's been told by, a bunch of my dentists that have done this podcast, you know, it's just kind of the golden rule, kind of treat others how you want to be treated and just, uh, you know, exactly. good things will come from it. You know, your practice will grow. I remember just like you said, the first week, you know, three people came in and it just took right. time and you just got to put your dues in and you can't just, I mean, I got guys that, you know, practice limited to cosmetics, you know, back in the nineties and two thousands when it was this robust and, you know, they're cutting, they had to, have, you know, do a couple roundies a week minimum and they had this quota and you just can't really do it that way. And I think you can build a practice where you get, volume of patients that you can do good dentistry all the time but sometimes when you're pushing it too much where everything's a crown and everything's this and i don't know i think that comes back and gets you and bites you in the butt if you just do does, what good does. dentistry and uh yeah. treat people and good that's what, scares, that's what scares me about some of this you know well i hate to stereotype but the corporate dentistry is that you know you're not for your boy you got a bo- someone overlooking your shoulders saying you need to produce more you need well you know your first thing is you should be looking out for the patient yes you know and if it's productive, great. If not, you know, hey, 
but I don't I don't really have an answer for that for those people that are in those situations that get out of that situation. Yeah. You know? It's uh, it's tough. I mean, but yeah, that corporate dentistry is everywhere and heck, they got one around the corner here. They got like six hundred Zurich machines in there and it's just you know, they anti lab and if they do lab they send it offshore, you know, because it's all about yeah. how cheap they can get it, man. And it's like, gosh, you know, just pretend it's going in your mouth but it's all about the money and the bottom bottom line you know and um that's too bad when it you know when it's a a, a service that should be and i do feel i do bad for feel bad for all the young dental you know guys coming out because how much they owe from dental school i mean it's just so ridiculous you know four hundred thousand dollars in debt before you even start oh yeah that's tough that's a tough nut man yeah, how, and, uh, how did you handle that with yours? I mean, yours probably was a couple hundred at least back in the day, you know, in your time. Nah, wasn't it? it wasn't a couple hundred back in that, no. Nah. Really? <laughs> no, nah, it was like, I think it was less than a hundred, but. Oh, no um, kidding. Yeah. That's, that's how much it skyrocketed since then. That's so ridiculous. But, uh, that's four or five hundred. Yeah, no, you know, I had my office open, you know, I, you know, I paid it off, you know, it's like, you know, you know, it's a couple, it's, you just do your, and it pays off. It yeah. pays off a long one. I think it really. Is good to own your own private practice. So if you have the right personality for it, and you know, yeah, do your research. Make sure it's you know an area that so could support it. And I think maybe sometimes each young dentist might want to think about. I mean, there's a lot of pra- I know personally of really good practices for sale in rural areas. I mean, a couple of them. No kidding. And these guys aren't getting bites, man. Nobody wants to live out in the rural areas. You know, I mean, they can they can make a fortune there I mean, they want and they could still fly to the city on the weekends or something, you know? Exactly. And it's, I call them the poke and plum towns where you poke your head out the window, you plum out of town, <laughs> but it's, yeah. it's, uh, as some of our biggest doctors and some of our most successful guys that are just kind of crushing it on these small rural towns where people, yeah, and they I come mean, in from I mean, other towns to them. It's just, uh, and it's a beautiful lifestyle. I mean, if I was young and I mean, I've always kind of lived here in the city, kind of suburbia in a way. But man, I just—it's like you see it in movies and stuff. Some of these towns, and but I—I I just think that would be a beautiful place to live like that, and you know, raise a family. And uh, it's not the real big city hub, but like that. But I think there's a lot of opportunities out there for dentists, and uh, you know, I love marketing out in those areas because there's not usually a dental lab in town, so they usually have to send it out. And they're some of the best doctors, man. They just really. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the, I mean, if you really have a lot of debt, you know, make that, make that sacrifice and say, okay, I'm not going to live in downtown LA or, you know, Chicago, downtown Chicago. I'm going to live out in the middle of Illinois, you know, yeah. instead, you know, you know, on a weekend, so I, I, I'll be able to afford to go, to, you know, take the train or pick a short flight to downtown Chicago, hang out there and go back, you know? Absolutely. It's, it makes more financial sense to me than trying to open up with 27 dentists in the, in the square you know, one quarter yeah. mile, square mile. You know? Oh, we got a dentist on every corner here in Orange County in LA, just up the road. Same thing. And there's so much competition. Yep. And, uh, you know, there's 20 guys on, you know, in a, in a one mile square block. And it's just like, gosh, it's just, it is real competitive. And, um, you know, a lot of these guys came and afford my, you know, average price because yep. their overhead is so high. And they have so much debt that they have to send it for a $49 crown off to China or, you know, Vietnam or whatever. And it's like, I don't know. It's just, I understand, you know, when you have bills and, but to cut the lab uh, for 20, 30 bucks and just not really know what it's all about. And I just think, you know, you should be proud of what's going into someone's mouth and like, like it would go into your mouth, but I don't think a lot of the guys are telling them that are sending stuff offshore <laughs> that, Hey, this is coming to you. I got this as cheapest, one of the cheapest crowds in the mouth, but, uh, I don't know. Some guys have to do it, I guess, or they think they have to do it, but, um, I don't know. It's just with me. I just, I don't know. You get what you pay for. And I just think, uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. you know, they went, they went, I mean, patients, you know, I had patients leave my practice to go to the cheap, you know, you know, practice, you know, chain. And they came back a couple months later saying, you know, sorry, I, I got what I paid for. I realize that now, you know, <laughs> absolutely. I'll pay the- extra 20 bucks a crown to stay with you, you know? Oh, I know. And I know the dentists all around are having the same thing with the, with the corporate dentist and the, the guys that are just underpricing everything. And it's hard to compete with that, but the patients, they do know and they find out, you know, in time and just keep doing the good 
the good deed and it will come back, but yet it's getting more and more competitive. I mean, you hear about the stuff with, uh, you know, like Walmarts and stuff and things like that. They're going to put dental practices and, you know, come in and do your one hour crown or whatever. But, um, I don't know. I think I, in my time left here, I think in the next 15, 20 years, I'm still going to have plenty of doctors that are going to look for a good laboratory that can help with them make their practice easier when it comes to lab services and instead of just uh hey, you, you you always deliver the quality and there's always a need for that man yeah i think so and I, I you know i'm not worried about it but we're just trying to find the good guys so it's just um yeah you just keep reaching out there for them so dude tell me a little bit about uh pretty exciting this year first time ever dental town is leaving vegas for the dental town meeting yeah. man so yeah, they uh, want you know, I'm not involved in the selection committee, but uh, yeah. they decided, let's check it out, check out Orlando. You know, so many people, some guys from the East Coast don't want to go out to Vegas, you know, and that type of thing. So we're doing the Orlando thing, and it, it looks like it's going really good. It's at a, a, a resort there, Bonnet Family Resort, whatever. So you could do the Universal, you could do the Disney, and you, it's still, there's still nightlife in Orlando. I mean, around oh, yeah. there, there's a lot of. I mean, there's no gambling, I guess, but it's still everything else is there. Yeah, I mean, they got the alligators that eat the little kids on the sandy beach. If you don't watch them, no. <laughs> right. no you got to be careful that, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> no, it's a beautiful resort. I love that little pool they got, like a little. I haven't, you been there? I don't know if you've been there. I just kind of seen the pictures and stuff. It looked like oh, it would be okay. really kind of neat. But then again, for us to go all the way to Florida, man, I had a 40-minute flight to Vegas, and now I got, yeah, what, nice. a six-hour? Man, yeah, I don't know about that. I, I, my company's in Phoenix, but I'm in, uh, I live, as you know, in Pennsylvania, so it's actually closer for me. But, uh, what a trip. Now, I thought you were going to move out there, man, to Phoenix and stuff. No huh? way. No way. <laughs> hey, listen, if I move out to Phoenix, right, then I have to get in, I have an office in the office building. I have to punch in a nine to five. <laughs> you know, now I know I work at what I want. You know, I put my hours in here. I make my own hours. If I want to come in at 11, I do. If I want to. You know, work a little bit at 10 o'clock at night, I could do it. You know, it's like, yeah, that's I'm awesome. not too old. And you put your time I'm in, baby. You put your time in. You need to yeah. keep doing yeah. what you're doing because you're a, you're a force in dental time. You've been a great dentist and you've had a great career. And you know, you might as well Thank live you. life a little bit, baby. And uh, that's what oh, you're yeah. doing. I'm taking my vacations. I'm doing. You know, I'm a it's the type of job. But since it's all over the internet, I can still. You know, I still can have a, my laptop on me on a beach in Florida if I want to. Absolutely. You know? How's that boy of yours, man? Is he up and out of the house yet, or what? Yeah, he's uh, he's just turned 28. He's finishing up his MBA at Indiana University in yeah. Indiana. Hoosiers, right? Yeah. And next, he he got a nice job in mark in marketing with uh, J P Morgan Chase. Oh, you're kidding! So, uh, so it's a, that's a, that's a pretty big company. So he's uh, a yeah. real that, happy. Move he's up the ladder good. there. He'll be taking care of Papa before you know it. That's <laughs> awesome. So. Yeah, he, he had nothing to do with dentistry. He just, you know, I had him in one summer when he was like 16 years old. And I was spending a, a crown on the lady, right? And yeah. Of course, as usual, I couldn't find my dental assistant. I didn't know where she was, right? <laughs> so I said, put some gloves on. And he put some gloves on. I said, okay, now put your thumb on this tooth while I floss it. You know, to floss it some like that out of the way. Uh-huh. He goes, Dad, no. And I go, no, God, just do it. So he does it. And then... The patient leaves, and he's never got physical, right? He pushes me, he gets, grabs my collar, oh, pushes me, goes, nah, that was the most disgusting thing I've ever had to do in my life. I'm like, okay, my boy's not going to be a dentist. I now know. You know? Yeah. You're like smack him upside there. Quit being a sissy boy. Get in there and pull that tooth. No. Uh, no. Oh, I did. All you had to do was just hold the crown out while I put um, against the tooth while I floss the, the, you know, setting up cement, you know? Oh, man. And he, and he, he thought it was disgusting. So I said, all right, I'll be selling my practice to somebody else someday down the road <laughs> he said dad i'm not doing this dentistry stuff oh, i couldn't handle dentistry like i'm when i see blood and stuff man i'm just like a sissy oh, boy yeah. it's like i started getting that little yeah. uh, gag reflex like oh like i'm gonna up chuck i just i don't know how you guys do it especially when you get infected you know abscess teeth and oh we gotta release release the the juice yeah, sometimes <laughs> yeah, it's- Smell is the worst thing sometimes. Oh, what just to get into someone's mouth, it smells like a bowl of a hole, you know? It's like, dude, yeah. you got to wipe that mouth. No. Maybe, just... maybe I'll wear two masks for this one, you know? <laughs> yeah. You got to go get yourself a mouthwash first because I ain't getting in there. No, I, well, I could never do it, dude. That's just so nuts. Yeah. So, dude, tell me a little bit. What do you think about the digital revolution, you know, impressions and or chair side I, I think it's exciting, man. I mean, 
you know, it's just, I think it's fun too. It's like a toy, you know? I mean, I used to, I got, I did some, I was doing some digital at the end there and uh, I really enjoyed it. I mean, some guys like, I don't wonder, but I enjoyed taking the impression digitally and, yeah, it's no. neat. It's what well, shit we did almost over five hundred uh, just digital impressions, and uh, you know a lot of them modelless, and it's just so neat. It's just so accurate, it's man. It's so freaking accurate. It's like because the dentist, by the time he can digitize that whole prep and get it, he's not allowed to go to the next level till we get it all okayed on the computer. And it's just yeah. so amazing how that works. I, and I just don't understand some of the comp- digital companies are like making you do like so much a year or yeah. per case. They should just just sell them the goddamn thing, right? Oh, I just know. Well, we and had the then, same then, thing with dongle fees. Every time we use this, yeah. they still do it, you know, with some of them. But you got to have open architecture, dude. And I think that I think if once they get to that, then it really will take off. Because some, I mean, nobody wants to pay a monthly fee for thing you use every day you know yeah it's kind of crazy i mean the whole align technology the itero guys they won't accept anything from trios now and it's just kind of like uh it's kind of bummer you know but um i think you know they all should uh eh, it's all about money for these big corporate companies trying to make money for their shareholders but uh i don't know <laughs> i think it turns a lot of dentists off into, into actually getting it a device but so i think that's holding it back but it's still gonna take off either way yeah well, dude, I love it. I love it. I mean, I embrace it. You know, it's a uh, shit. I'd be, yeah. I'd be up to like 200 people if I didn't have some of my CAD CAM machines and I don't have to hire as many people, man. And it's just like, you, know, you, know, you don't even, when you get a digital crown and you don't even port a model up or anything. Yeah. A lot of them we can do modelists. I just did a three unit on me at a little bridge on the posterior left side and the doctor just scanned it in my mouth, put a temp on, and at the lab, I went back, and we just milled it. No model, nothing. And it went in my mouth with no adjustments. And I'm a, oh, it's just freaking, I got a Bruxer aesthetic bridge, man. It's stronger and shit, and I'm a grinder. And it's been about four or five months in there, and it was the most, it was just neat. And it's just, uh, the technology is just unbelievable. I mean, it's just, uh, it's a game changer. And, if, you know, my kids are, you know, been working with me for like 10 years plus, you know, and they, you know, they're the ones helping me with this podcast, you know, these techie little kids and, uh, you know, and my other son, you know, uh, does all the CAD CAM designs and stuff like that. And it's just amazing. It's kind of, um, it's just a uh, revolutionary the way, uh, technology has changed yeah. in the last 10 years, man. And I've been doing this 30, 33 years now. And it's like the last 10 is like, dude, we used to have to work so hard and do so many steps. I mean, I still do a ton of PFMs, so we still have 10, 12 steps where now we can just put a damn, you know, <laughs> we get something through the interweb and it comes to us and we design it and push the button yeah. it goes to the machine and mills it and then it goes to a certified dental tech that has it it grinds in a, you know contacts perfectly finishes it up and glazes it and it just it saves 90 percent of the time and the accuracy yeah. our remakes are down to one percent on these you know uh, monolithics there's no breakage you know the the biggest thing yeah. is getting those aesthetics right and we're we're nailing them and like yeah. better yeah and you know when you do it digitally, the dentist that gets to see the impression really and says, "Ooh, I didn't get all the yes. margin there," and exactly. they go back in and pick it up. I mean, and that's a you know, that, you're like, "Ooh, I got to do it better now because it's blown up on your screen now." Yeah. So like, and they won't, know, we won't get it till like they get got to pass all those you know parameters. Yeah. This is so bitching. I, I love it, man, because the dentist is sending us great stuff. It's like boom. It's like I it's, bet you get better margins on those because uh, the dentist. Is, it on the screen, rather look at this tiny little pressure to see it on the screen. They go, Ooh, yeah, I gotta yeah. get that one area. Oh, exactly. And it's easy, just go back in and cat. You don't have to start from scratch. No, nope. you just go. Yeah, you go you to know, the basal right? distal where it was a little messed up. Well, you just do right there. And I've even yeah. had it where dentist we missed, like they had a chamfer, but it was a kind of a chamfer beveled a little bit, and we finished it at the end of the chamfer. And he goes, "No, I need this beveled as that you know mesial and interproximal of the distal and the, to the lingual. I need that beveled, and I just chamfered on the facial. And so basically, we just went into the uh, computer and redesigned it to there where he didn't have to take a new impression or nothing. We extended it to there." redid the restoration and got it back to him overnight and he put it to the place and it's like boom just like that because we keep all the files and even too if someone happened where something went awry we could just refabricate it and uh, it's just amazing it's so yeah cool. i think i think it leads it actually leads to better dentistry in the long run that's so awesome. No, we we love it, dude. And hey, so let's wrap this up, man. I can't thank you enough for for doing this, Doctor Goldstein, and all the years we've been together. I'm gonna see you next week. We, we're gonna so we'll do dinner on Friday, probably. <laughs> right. 
Good Friday. Uh, when I set it up at a uh, Nelcoat. It's a uh, what's that? It's, it's a really cool restaurant that was a little trivia, and it was designed as the villa in France where the Rolling Stones recorded "Exile on Main Street." Oh, you're okay? kidding! I love that song. I go in there and I go, "This place." I've seen pictures of this place before, and I there was a lot of pictures of the Rolling Stones. Then I went out and I talked that on the man and says, "No, this was a replica of a, a villa in southern France." Where you know, I go, "Whoa!" Really? And, and Rosenblatt knows the owner, and they have this. It sounds disgusting, but they have this pizza. It's like a green pizza, and they put raw egg on top of it. Shannon, I'll eat it sounds that. disgusting, but it's really good. <laughs> oh God, I hope they got something for Shannon to eat. It sounds kind of fluffy. They better have. No, some... no, they have a. They, have a good... they got like steaks and lobsters and shit, or what? Yeah, yeah as long as they got that, I'll be good. <laughs> uh, well, hey, Dr. Goldsey, man, hey. thank you so much for coming on to our podcast today, and I just can't thank you enough for all the work and all the years of just your friendship, man. I just love you, dude. And, uh, I always like hanging out with Keith, man. He's the man. <laughs> yeah, we're going to raise some hell, baby. We're going to burn that town to the ground. We will have to go yeah. by Wiener's. I think we're going to get a big car and stuff for all of us, we'll get one of those big stretch 30 person play things or whatever but uh we got to go to like we, we might have to go to wienerville or wiener town or wherever the hell that place is called and wiener circle, yeah. Wiener circle. Wiener circle. yeah you got to youtube that wiener circle youtube it and that owner lady i don't know if she's the owner she's the head lady Pucci. remember Pucci. yeah Pucci. Pucci's her name remember she called dr uh rosenblatt like because rosenblatt's not real tall he goes you yeah. she goes you little drink of water <laughs> Uh, or, it was a lot worse than that, but oh no, it was like here. you little Joe Pesci or something. What'd she call him? <laughs> you really want to know? She called him a midget shit stain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, that's crazy. I love uh, Rosalind. I'm a, I can't wait to see that yeah. guy. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, hey, yeah, dude. I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad. Yeah, man. We'll see. See you, man. I'll see you in, uh, in Orlando, uh, yeah. in, I guess, in April. Yeah, we'll see you in a week, and then we'll see you again. You know, actually, my team's going out to Orlando. I don't think I'm going to go out there. Maybe we will. We'll see. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, dude. Hey, Dr. Goldstein, thank you so much. And uh, th- Always a pleasure to talk to you, Sean. Really. Uh, I love you, man. Thank you so much. And, hey, have yourself a great day today and a great weekend. <laughs> thank you. All right, Good dude. podcast. All right. Thank Later, you. man. Hey, I want to thank everybody for joining us on the Dental Up podcast show this week. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or search Dental Up Podcast on iTunes and get our weekly feed. Don't forget to visit KeatonDentalArts.com slash promo for exclusive offers. Keaton Dental Arts is a full-service dental laboratory, and we're nationwide. We would love for you to send us a case so we could show you the Keating difference. If you dig what you've heard, please leave us a review on iTunes, and we'll be back next week.